Hello and welcome to Dog Show Mentor Facebook Live. I'm here today with Richard Paquette. Hey, Richard. How are you, Lee? I am absolutely fabulous. I'm so happy to be here uh, in this inaugural episode. And we're going to be here every week, uh, Wednesday at noon Pacific. So, um, Richard, we're going to start out by asking people, what's your breed and where are you from? And do you have a mentor? Do you have a breed mentor? Because that's what we're going to talk about today is breed mentors and how they how they help us become our best um, at dog shows and, and sometimes away from dog shows. So if you're here, put your name and breed and the name of your mentor in the chat. And in the meantime, Richard, I'm going to introduce Richard and tell you a little bit about him, even though he really shouldn't require much introduction. Richard, you bred Shih Tzu for since really since 1971 under the Wenrick prefix. But you also have had many other breeds like Sammies, Afghans, Salukis, Whippets, Maltese, Pekingese, Lakelands. And so Lakelands and Shih Tzu were your primary breeds um, that you bred with Wendy Paquette as well. Yes. And uh... We do, we do focus on the Shih Tzu primarily, and we dabble with the Lakelands. And we have had uh, dogs over our 50 years in the game, uh, various breeds, uh, you know, just try them out, have some fun with them. Uh, and, and it's really great experience that we've gained from being involved in several other breeds. But you've bred 300 Canadian champions and 150 American champions and and 20 different best in show winners that's that is an astonishing number and an astonishing longevity but what really uh, when I when I was reading your bio I noticed that in 15 years now that's not a long time in dogs in 15 years as a professional handler you finished over 500 dogs well, we we did have a lot of fun, let me tell you. And uh, we had some great clients who provided us with some outstanding dogs. And yes, we had fun. But getting back to this mentor thing, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether we can, we, we did flash a quick picture of Wendy, Wendy's very first Shih Tzu. And, and maybe we can flash that again and then move on to uh, where Wendy is today. So mentoring we had an amazing mentor in shih tzu and what had happened is we had a rescue samoid and i was taking him to dog shows and having a lot of fun and wendy was getting bored and she said you know i'm gonna go out and find my own breed i said knock yourself out there's 175 breeds at this show go find one a couple hours later she came back and she said i found the breed i want i said what is it she said, shiz, shiz, blue, sh shik, shu, some, something like that. And, and finally, we realized it was Shidzu. And she had happened upon a, a breeder that had an eight-month-old puppy at the time. And Wendy looked at that dog and the look of the dog, the personality, everything was what she wanted. And just so that you all, you know, all the people watching today realize that we all had a starting point. We were all ranked novices at one time. The first words that came out of Wendy's mouth, and this to Mrs. Pat Dixon, Wyvern Shih Tzu, back in the early 70s was, Ma'am, if I ever get a dog like this, would you let me breed it to your dog? Well, the long and the short of it is, Pat said, yes. And she mentored us for the next year or two, helped us acquire some Shih Tzu. We eventually bred to her dog, who coincidentally became a 25 time best in show winner. And we had our very first litter of Shih Tzu, which contained our very first Wenrick champion who went on to become a six time best in show winner and a national specialty winner. So beginner's luck, but the focus is without Pat Dixon mentoring us and pushing us into the right direction with all of her sage advice, 
we would not be where we are today. So you do need a mentor. So the other thing I heard in that story is that it seems like Wendy had an eye for a dog. She went out and she could see the quality, the style, the type in that 25 best in show winner. Yes, and, and, who right? was just, and, yeah, so just a puppy at the time. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah, we can flatter Wendy and say she recognized greatness right in the beginning and did have an eye for a dog. And one of the things that, um, you know, a lot of the, the great judges around the world, and I, I'm not going to say I'm a great judge, but the better judges like Wendy Paquette and myself, who are all breed judges, is we do have an eye for a dog. And, um, you know, it just comes from that 50 years of being involved in the sport, having mentors. We just didn't have Pat Dixon as our mentor. We had a lot of the breeders of the day helped us out. And then when we became handlers, um, we had a lot of help from various handlers. You know, uh, Ann Rogers Clark uh, was one of my mentors. Uh, she, she taught me how to scissor poodles as an example. And, uh, you know, Jane Forsythe and a lot of the greats from the past were our mentors and much appreciated because they gave us so much knowledge and information. And just by watching other judges who may not have even spoke a word to us, just by watching by observation, I consider those people mentors also. And, and one of the, the best things any novice can do is to watch and study other successful people in your breed. They may not be your specific mentor, but just by your observation of their success, their techniques, all that they do will help. And don't be shy. Don't go up to a, a breeder that's about to walk in the ring and ask them a question. Wait till they're finished showing their dog. They're sitting at the setup. They love to talk dogs. And if you have a question about your breed, there are very few people who will put you off. Most of them are quite happy to help younger breeders and novices and even old time breeders and novices. I, I get I get information from people every time I'm out there. It's true. And and right now I'm looking at uh, all the people who have posted, um, Cindy has Spanish water dogs. Uh, Tracy has Cairns. Her mentors were Angie Chiquette and Carrie Jack Loken. And Ragishwar has Black Russians in California. Uh, Nikki Higgins has a few mentors, including Elizabeth Theodorson and Liddy Hutchinson. Um, Crystal Davies. Crystal's here. Um, we were going to um, tell a story about Crystal later. She has Lakeland Terriers, and her mentor is Terry Alloway. Uh, awesome. Bev, Bev Dorma has Havanese. Uh, Sandy Kempton has Toy Manchesters. And two breed mentors, Jim and Michelle, in Maryland. Um, so we've got lots of people who are aware of and are actively pursuing mentors breed mentors, which are so important. Um, Hillary has wired her pointing Griffons um, and her mentors are Aileen Tremblay and Renee Fortier and a few more. Well, you have to mention CJ for Hillary because uh, CJ's uh, Hillary's partner and handler. And uh, I'm sure Hillary has learned a lot from CJ. A lot of CJ. Canadians on, on this uh, post today. Yeah, I wonder why. So what, yeah, we, what we did mention for people who, who don't know is that uh, Richard is an all breed judge in Canada. And so, um, and he's judged internationally in so many countries that it, it's not even, it, you know, we can't even mention all of them, but literally around the world. <clears throat> How many countries did you say? 20? Well, over 30 different countries and 30. six different continents multiple times. And, uh, you know, a dream building session for uh, some of the younger breeders and even some of the breeders that are, you know, been in it 20 and 30 years. 
you may want to consider entering into the judging profession because I've been blessed with all of that travel on someone else's ticket. And it's it's been so much fun to travel around the world and see all the different countries and the different dogs and meet breeders from all around the world. So a little dream building session for everyone on the, on the chat today is uh, dream. You need to have some really big dreams. And maybe your dream might be like when I first looked at the How to Raise and Train book of the Sammy and I got to the last chapter, make your dog a champion. Well, I said to myself, wow, that would be so much fun. <laughs> and that was my first dream. My first goal was to make my rescue Samoid a champion. And, you know, I have to say he did quite well at the dog shows. <laughs> Beginner's luck and horseshoes I have been blessed with. So, yes, dream big. And just don't dream to go to the dog show and, and, and have a good showing. You should try to be competitive. You, you need to raise the level of your presentation such that um, all that hard work, time and money that you've put into the sport will reap some rewards. So dreaming has a lot to do with it too. So, you know, dream to go to your national and, and win winner's dog or win best of breed. But if you don't dream about actually attaining these goals and you squalor in mediocrity why do you do that you all can be just as successful you could be the next richard paquette well that is a dream isn't it it's a dream for a lot of people including people like uh kristen johnson and alexis from manitoba canada german shepherds uh whippets Penny Lewis is her mentor for Whippets and Emily Lenahan for German Shepherds, but also um, other people. And Debbie Roberts says she's from Gresham, Oregon with Mastiffs. And she's shown to me or to Richard. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael Nelson says, I learned to scissor poodles from Richard Bauer. Wendell wow. Samet and Paul Edwards. Well, I guess you had a good start. And I, by observation, when I went to American dog shows, watched Richard and Wendell, you know, scissor their dogs and, and do their top knots up. And, and, you know, just standing 10 feet away and or even sometimes walking up and introducing myself. And they were always so helpful. And, you know, they weren't intimidated. They were so relaxed. You know, and, and they do teach you a lot. So don't be afraid to go ask some of these top breeders and handlers some tips. I used to sit under that grooming tent. And, of course, having at the time I had Rottweiler, so I didn't have a lot of grooming. <clears throat> and it was so fascinating to watch the poodles being done up and the scissoring. And I try to figure out, you know, at what angle they were looking now and <clears throat> the dimension, you know, it's three, it's three dimensional. So it's, um, I found it fascinating. I still do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we talk about mentors, we're just not mentors. Sometimes we're coaches. Sometimes we're just to, to instill a little bit of confidence in an exhibitor. I can remember one time watching um, a beautiful Pekingese, lose to another well-known exhibitor only because that person did not show that intensity and um, and show with their body language that they actually felt they had the best dog. So just, you know, I said to them that day after judging, I said, you blew that. You, you, if you just need to go in there and look the part a lot more, you know how to do it. Why do you go in there and tremble or look you know, with such trepidation, <laughs> instead of going in there with exuding confidence, go into junior handling 101, show your dog off, try to accentuate some of the highlights of your dog's um, breed essence, rather than just stand there like a bump on the log and let the other people walk all over you. So having that intensity, that body language in the ring is, is, is something we do as mentors when we're ringside coaching people. Just right. give them a little more confidence. The next day, that lady went in and won the group with her Pekingese. So sometimes it just takes a little added push for you to have more incentive than 
to get out of those doldrums and, you know, being a bit lackadaisical and, you know, everybody thinks, oh, my dog should win on its merit. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> your dog has to have merit in order to win, but the presentation is a big part of that win. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to show off your dog's merits. It can win on its merits, but you have to show them to the judge. And sometimes I feel like saying, show me what you got, right? Show me what you got. Mm -hmm. I can't well, wait I to mean, see I tease a lot of handlers and, and, and when I was doing mentoring with them and I say, hey, you're nothing but a used car salesman. you got to <laughs> sell that car to the judge. Now, would you just go in there and, and, and not show how glossy your coat was and how polished that car was? Would you not show how structurally sound it was? Would you not demonstrate all these things and, and, and exude confidence when you're talking about that dog? Now, we don't normally talk a lot to judges, but we can do it with our body language. We can tell that judge, this is the best dog in the ring. Or we can sit back and lose. And, and you know, we create mental pictures as well in our minds. And when we have those mental pictures, I think that they're related in some way to the people around us. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, when I do my handling classes, um, Americans know this lady too. She's won the group at Westminster. Elaine Paquette, no relation to me at all with her Bouviers. You need to watch Elaine in the ring. And she's not too pushy. She doesn't overdo it, but you can tell she's there to win. So if you ever have an opportunity to attend a dog show where you go with Bouviers and you see Elaine Paquette's name there, go watch Elaine and learn from Elaine the right amount of um, intensity and showmanship and confidence to exude that will increase your winning percentage. Because that's truly, as mentors and coaches, we want to do for you is to help increase your winning percentage. And, and not just confidence, but confidence backed up by competence, right? Like Elaine, she's a competent handler. She knows what she's doing. She's timely, efficient. Uh, she doesn't have to set the front four times to get it right. Um, she knows where her dog's virtues are. She probably knows who she should beat in the ring and maybe who who is her primary competition, right? She knows when a judge is going to look at another dog and how to get that judge to look at her dog. And that's what we're really talking about. So, so we could ask who are, who are her mentors to teach her those skills and techniques and strategies in the ring. Yeah. And I'm sure Elaine has um, has talked to many of the top exhibitors. And, and I ju just don't say handlers. There are so many great owner handlers out there. They're not professionals, but they have raised their game to the point where they're on the same playing field as a pro handler. And, um, you know, you get good judges, you get good owner handlers, you can expect to win. Well, Rageshwar from California says, um, whether one is developing an eye or ring skills or breed understanding, I believe it's the mentor's feedback, all caps, that makes a big difference for me. It's not just sharing their knowledge, but how it pushes, pulls with my personal dog stage goals. And that is so true, Rageshwar, that <clears throat> when I'm working with people in Dog Show Mentor Program, um, it is the feedback that I give my members that helps them and it has to be appropriate to what they're working on and what their personal goals are. So it's always about what are your goals? People say, well, should I go to this show or that show? Or should I do this or do that? But what are your goals? Which is most important to you? Goals and dreams, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and loyalty to your mentor. You don't have to do everything your mentor says you should do. You should try to decipher all the knowledge they're imparting to you and choose what works best for you. 
there's no point in trying to challenge your mentor and, and say, oh, well, that doesn't work. You just try, do things, experiment, be open-minded. Now, did I do every little thing my mentors told me to do? No. You know, I, I, I did make judgments on my own also, but I always respected my mentors. I very seldom, I don't think I ever would have challenged them. I would listen to the knowledge they're imparting and I would work through it and experiment with some of the things they told me and to see exactly what works best for me and my dog. But that respect for your mentor is so important. You know, I, I like that you said that, Richard, that we not only do we need to respect them, but we need to try out what's right for us. And if you have a really good mentor, that person is going to be connected with you in some deeper way that they, they understand you and what your needs are, and they understand what your dreams and goals are, and they can provide you with uh, both intuitive feedback and in feedback that involves explicit directive information. Yeah. As a mentor, one of the things I try to um, to teach a lot of my students is don't give up. Don't let someone steal your dream. Don't let some unsportsmanlike exhibitor ruin your dream. You know, there are there the majority of people out there are amazing. Our dog family, you can't. You know, I don't, I, I, I would not want to belong to another family of individuals other than my dog family. And for the most part, each and every one of them wants to help you. There are some bad actors out there. Don't let those bad actors steal your dream and um, don't get discouraged. Do you know how many people have quit the sport when they were on the cusp of great success? And, um, you know, don't quit. Be dedicated, passionate, work hard, try different things, have a great mentor. Listen to your mentor. Your mentor is going to coach you and tell you, don't worry about those people. You need to develop a thicker skin. Will any of these little things that happened to you along the way that were unsportsmanlike really affect you? Say to yourself, will this matter in one year? or in five years. No, it will not unless you let them get you. Don't let people steal your dream. Richard, how did you maintain that longevity that you had in dogs? Was it, was it the energy that you had in your breeding program? I mean, so many people in, 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 my, in my program, people will sometimes come to me and say, woe is me, everything's, you know, everything's bad, everything's awful, I can't stand it, I want to quit. And usually I work, at, help them work through that, that that's not really what they want, but what they want is the ability to make the appropriate changes to get the result that they want. But you've had, you had 50 years in breeding and showing how, how did you have that longevity, particularly in your breeding program of success? Well, Beautiful dogs that you've bred. Obviously, <clears throat> I'm a fairly positive person to start with. I try to surround myself with other positive people. My clients were always positive. If I had a Negatron client, I trained them to be a little bit more <laughs> optimistic and not right. to have undue expectations. But I'm here to tell you success if you're asking me why I have had a great deal of success, it's because of the hard work. There were no tricks. There were no secrets. It was hard work. It was breeding good dogs, having disasters in litters, you know, through selective breeding, continuing to be able to consistently produce a breed type that conformed to the standard. And, and even when our dogs look different from everyone else's dogs, we knew our dogs were to standard. They were well-bodied, they were well-boned, they were all of these things. So you need to believe in what you have 
be sure that you know that your breed type is correct to the standard and stick with it. But again, there are no tricks. It's all passion, hard work, and dedication. I don't know how many times Wendy Paquette missed dinner because she was down in the Shih Tzu room because our, our, our grooming room was in our home. She was down in the grooming room grooming a dog and she'd come up at eight o'clock and, uh, and, and I already had the kids all in bed or whatever and, and she was totally exhausted and I said, where are you going? I all oh, that darn puppy went and scratched its top knot out. I got to go down and put it back in. Instead of just going to bed and not worrying about it and, and then, you know, it's that passion and dedication that if you commit to, you too will be just as successful as all the top breeders and handlers out there. So <clears throat> hard work, dedication, and commitment. Um, Nikki Higgins says her handler mentors are Clayton Harris, Tracy, Louise, Jeff, and RC. And Regishwar says, Interesting. Sometimes mentors are the only one who cheers for you at groups, you know, and, and that brings me to a point that your mentor is really the person or persons who have only your best interest at mind at heart. They don't, um, they're not duplicitous. They have, they are invested in you. And that's what you want in a mentor, whether it's a breed mentor, whether it's a coach, um, whether it's someone like the Dr. Mentor program, we're invested in you and your success. Well, one of um, one of my um, mentors was R.C. Cruz. He, um, he showed a dog, uh, Wendy the Welsh, who went group fourth at Montgomery back in whenever. And I got that dog in Canada to show for the next two years. So I was able to mentor under R.C. Carusi to learn lots of great techniques uh, for grooming my terrier and training terriers. And even to this day, uh, the exciting thing about being an all-breed judge is that you can ask top breeders sometimes we don't know at all, you know. We do struggle sometimes with specific breed points and breed essence. And we ask breeders, is this considered a little too coarse? Is this considered too refined? Is this considered uh, too, too this or too what? And we can ask them those questions. So I get mentored every weekend I judge because I take advantage of the people that I Absolutely. know who are top breeders and exhibitors. And if I'm a little bit confused about some aspect of the standard, I'm very easy to ask them, hey, is that is that eye shape the really correct? Is it not too small? And, and sometimes they'll say, yes, you really picked up on that well. Or sometimes they'll say, no, no, Richard, it's supposed to be like that. So, you know, having this, this quest for knowledge at all times. Always. And there's another really important point. When you stop learning, please quit. Please get yeah. out of the game. <laughs> like when you think you know it all, you need to retire. I've been in it 50 years. Every time I do anything, get ready for a presentation, uh, um, do a judging assignment, whatever, I am still learning every day. So don't be closed mind to this continuing education concept. And Again, the topic today was having the importance of a good mentor. If any one of you out there don't have a mentor that you can pick up to the phone and, and, and ask a good question about something involved in this sport, then you need to rethink your involvement. You need to have these mentors. I have people call me all the time, Richard, what's going on? I mean, I, mean, I had a reader today send me some messages about a, a problem she's having with whelping a litter of puppies. And I'm more than glad to help, you know, and, and all the, the good dog people out there are very helpful. You Absolutely. need to develop a rapport with them. Absolutely. Well, Richard, we are just about out of time. And uh, I want to tell everyone that you're, what you told me was the most important takeaway 
that they could have today. Well, I, I thought I just said that. <laughs> You cannot succeed in this. You know, in a nutshell. In, in a, a nutshell, nutshell. <laughs> you need great mentors and you need great coaches. And you have one on one mentorship and you also have um, mentors that you just observe. And, and by their success, you observe it. And I would encourage a lot of people, and I'm, I'm quite impressed. Uh, I mean, you and I have known each other for a long time. And uh, we judged together in Saskatoon a few weeks ago. And I asked you, what's about this dog show mentor thing that you do? And I was so proud of you because you have helped countless people, you know, have a lot more knowledge and confidence to go into the ring and present their dogs such that they rise their level of presentation and training and you name it to the good, the degree where they're on the same playing field as a lot of these expert handlers and exhibitors. And you, I'm sure, have helped many to increase their winning percentage. I, I, I have. And um, it's important to me because I love the sport and I love what I'm doing. I love owner handlers. I love the dogs and I love all my exhibitors. I love the professionals. And I love anyone who keeps the bar high and stays positive and forward thinking during it. And next time we meet Richard, we'll be talking about how to dance. So thank you, everybody, for all your comments. I wish I'd had a chance to read all of them, but I didn't. But they will be on the Facebook page and this will be uh, posted on the Dog Show Mentor Facebook page and shared to Richard's personal Facebook page. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Lee. I've, I've had a great time. I will see you in the winter circle. <laughs>